Hello, everyone. Am, am I live? I am live. You can hear me. Excellent. Welcome to our talk. Uh, my name is Michael Windsor. I am a product manager at Google. I've been here for about three years. Um, since I got here, my focus has been around G Suite developer platform and tools. Uh, I've been leading the team towards getting this. Um, really happy to be here. And I'm here with me is Geva. Um, you have our email addresses there. Um, just so you know, my email address is spelled G-E-V-A <laughs> at google.com. It, it works really well. It's good. So. Um, hi, I'm Geva. I'm product manager for AppMaker. I've been at Google for five years now, and um, I've worked on Google Maps recently. I'm from Israel and did a few startups and worked in VCs before I joined Google. And anyone who's in the room with us today, we assume that you're either an IT developer or a um, business analyst working in a line of business, or you may be a partner supporting companies in their business processes. Um, there are probably some CDOs and CIOs, uh, CSOs here. Uh, we believe all of you have business workflow challenges in your companies, and you're looking for quick and efficient ways to deal with them. Um, so we're here um, today to talk to you about AppMaker. This is um, our solution for internal business apps, which you can develop using low code. And the key benefits of this product are that it's fast. You can do your uh, data binding and UI design very quickly. It's integrated so that um, you can like, pretty much have any data source with your app and uh, use any Google service with it. And it's compliant. So it's based on Google Drive in G Suite, and um, that means that your domain security rules apply and the data doesn't leave your domain. So I want to start by talking a little bit about how we came to this place, how we came to develop AppMaker. And it starts really with the, you, the customers. When we started having conversations, when I first started at Google, talking to customers about what they were trying to do, as they'd moved towards Google, they had all these different problems that they had previously solved in various ways. Some good, some bad, and they wanted a way to build these solutions running on top of G Suite. And these are so problems that are not well met by the major SaaS products. So if you think about whether it's G Suite or Salesforce or NetSuite or Marketo, all these different things, right? These are great things. They solve things very well, but they tend to sort of normalize and commoditize the problem domain that you're working in, and you have less flexibility. And so if you think about the main silos of software, you have your line of business software. That's how we make the donuts operational software, which is how we pay for the donuts or get them paid, and then productivity. The gaps in between those spaces are where businesses try to automate, try to connect things and make it work well, whether it's order fulfillment or event planning, whether it's you know, approvals for various in internal business work pro processes or scheduling, you know, like planning helpers where I need to have a queue of people who can come in and book office hours. These are things that today are solved by horribly manual processes involving lots of emails, documents. We all seen the spreadsheet from hell, right? Every business has somebody who's basically unfireable because they, want, they manage that spreadsheet that is used for some incredibly important crazy process. And everyone here is like chuckling, like, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Um, and, you know, when we see people trying to solve this, sometimes they go off and they use various SaaS solutions out there. They self-serve. And that creates admin headaches. They've got new silos of data, new clouds of compliance. So admins are very worried about all these unauthorized solutions coming in there. So this is the context in which we came, and we really want to start solving those problems. I want to help set the picture here uh, with one example. A few years ago uh, at Google, our recruiters from the HR department reached out to the IT department. We call this the Corp Eng. And um, they were facing a problem of um, really wildly increasing uh, volume of candidates. We were starting to see thousands of candidates uh, at Google every month. Each one of those was interviewed by at least one interviewer. So we were getting a lot of uh, textual feedbacks being piled up. And um, it was taking a long time. And it was really difficult to assess these feedbacks. So we were looking into some kind of manageable solution that would also let the recruiters calibrate the different candidates across different skill sets and be able to get back to the candidates in a timely manner. So um, we looked into how we can build an app that uh, will do this quickly and efficiently. In addition to this uh, ask from the HR department, 
there were different areas, different parts of Google that had their own um, requests and special processes that they wanted to tackle in a good way. So they were uh, reaching out to the IT department continuously with more and more app uh, building requests. And the IT department was also um, looking to automate their own uh, internal processes, as I believe many of you look to automate uh, processes like dashboards to track a lot of projects that are ongoing. So the IT department started building business apps to deal with their own workflow. We realized that we need a good solution for low-code business app development at Google so that we could actually make our software engineers very efficient doing these custom apps and spending the majority of their time developing the hard technical problems that we have. And also at the same time to empower a lot of other different people in the company that have some level of coding affinity or um, you know, like and uh, to actually go ahead and develop business apps on their own or getting very little assistance. So this was really taking off very well, and uh, we were starting to see a lot of internal apps getting, um, b being built, and um, there were lots of areas that were getting addressed by AppMaker. As you can see, in the last three years, we've got to almost 400 apps, and uh, they have currently hundreds, and some of them even thousands of Googlers using them, sometimes daily. Um, a lot of the people inside the company are not even always aware that they're actually using an app that was built with AppMaker, which is a great success. And the majority of these apps was built by non-software engineers or with little uh, software engineering help. And, and people outside of the CorpBench. So CorpBench was not tasked with taking these things on. Other teams said, we're going to build this. And CorpBench says, that's OK by us. It's a huge win. And so the major point that we want you to take away here is that we were seeing a very impressive transition and lowering of the bar for building custom business apps by moving um, the development of these apps from software engineers in the IT department solely to also seeing them you know, being built by a lot of other different people outside of IT. So let's talk a little bit about why this is such a point of pain. Right? Why is it hard to build these apps? Why is IT not prioritizing these applications, and how can we do this better? So earlier on, I talked about how you know, it's line of business, operational, and productivity. Well, if you're a business planner, when you think about your IT spend and how you're going to prioritize your resources, it's on the things that absolutely matter to the business. Line of business first, operations second, and productivity and everything else in the gaps, well, they come second. If there's a way for humans to solve the problem, you're going to prioritize expensive software development elsewhere. And that is aggravated or exacerbated by the fact that the stakeholders are coming to you with problems that they understand from their perspective, but they're not software developers, they're not product managers. So their ability to articulate a plan about what we should build is just not their problem domain. It's not what they do. They are sales specialists, they are HR specialists, they're all these other things. They're not product managers. So everybody in IT knows when somebody from accounting comes to me and says, I've got this really important thing I need you to build, they have no idea what they're talking about, and you dread actually trying to build it. Right? And that's a big problem. And then there's just the basic fact of building an application is not a trivial exercise. We know how to do it. There's a well-defined pattern. We use you know, different frameworks, different app systems, you know, hosting environments, and all these things. But there's a lot of work to stand that up, and then, of course, keeping it up, maintaining the code and operationalizing it, keeping it running on an ongoing basis is non-trivial. So these are all things that get in the way of trying to do that. And then finally, you've got your policy and admin people telling you apps have to conform to certain basic things. We don't want rogue apps, rogue IT, rogue data everywhere. So this is a, just a big problem we really need to take on and solve in terms of how we build these apps. So we're really excited about being able to bring AppMaker into this space because AppMaker is part of G Suite. It means everybody G Suite, every G Suite for Business customer has access to AppMaker. These applications run on, and this was a critical requirement. Our customers are very clear. They run on G Suite infrastructure. So they leverage all the security, all the compliance, all the scalability, all the operational support, SRE, as we call it, site reliability. All that is built in. You have as many applications as you want. The applications are the pricing of the application is tied into the G Suite for Business thing. It's paid for, right? So it scales to the size of your organization. But you can have as many applications as you want. You can have as many databases as you want, right? It just 
you don't have to worry about that problem. So again, from an admin and compliance and policy point of view, the cost is built in to your G Suite for Business license. It scales to your organization, and the whole goal is to extend, to enhance your productivity suite, whether it's G Suite apps or third-party apps that are part of your, your portfolio, to integrate them and to create a more sort of solution-oriented space for your, your, your business users. This is my slide. Yeah, so now uh, we're going to invite Chris to show you hands-on how to build an AppMaker app right here now. Hey, guys. So let me just go ahead and switch over to my screen. All right, so can you guys see it? So once they switch over the demo, OK, great. So uh, hello, how are you guys doing? My name is Chris, or Christian Schalk. Um, so I, I've actually been working with AppMaker for a number of years, probably more years than I care to admit. And so I, a lot of the apps that uh, Gavin was re referring to, I actually you know, was helping you know, build out a lot of those solutions internally at Google. So I'm happy to at least give you, a, a, hopefully, a, a quick demo of what AppMaker looks like. So let me just switch over into how to build an application. So. Um, what I'm going to do is just create an application based off of a spreadsheet in a, just a matter of minutes. So in this case, what we're looking at is the AppMaker environment, and I'm going to create a new data model. Oh, also I should point out, this is based off of a template. So if you ever want to get started with AppMaker, you actually have like a whole series of different template applications. Some of them are quite sophisticated. But in this case, I just use like a simple starter app, which gives us like the menu header and, and so forth. So that's what we're looking at right here. So, Let's create a back-end data model. So essentially, this is like the back-end database for our application. It's going to utilize Google Drive Table, which is a, uh, a new database that you get for free whenever you build an AppMaker. And I'm going to create a model that's going to, in this case, it's like a series of stores, like a global registry of stores that we need to set up a way to do on-site inspections. And so in this case, I'm going to first click on Import the Fields, where I can go ahead and, and base the AppMaker data model off of this spreadsheet. So I happen to have my spreadsheet accessible in the Google Drive Picker window. And I, once I select it, it'll actually scan a little bit of the data so I can visually confirm that, yep, that's the data that I want to base my new model off of. It will then go through and, and essentially guess at what are the data types for my fields. And I'll click Create. And now we have a, a new data model. Now, if I wanted to, I could go in and further customize the fields, like adding validation and such. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and actually import the data as well. So let's just go ahead and select the store. And I, since I have the global store sheet handy, it'll keep that ready to go. And that will start the connection out to the, the actual spreadsheet and start pulling that data over. And I can even return back to the main page. And while that uh, import is done, oh, there we go, it's already finished. Now I can switch over and start building the UI. Now the first thing that you typically want to do is set up like a default data source for your UI. So in this case, I'm just going to point it to the uh, stores directly. And so that makes data binding a lot easier. So I can start to drag and drop widgets, which in this case, I just drag a form. And so the idea being that I can build forms, tables, or really any UI construct very easily by dragging and dropping the uh, widgets. In this case, it's like a composite widget. It's going to build me an entire insert form. And so for this one, I want to keep it simple. I just want a couple of fields. I want the location, and I want the inspection date. And we'll leave it as that. I'll click Finish. So there we go. We got a form that got generated for me. If I want to customize it further, I could take out some fields or whatever. And now I'm going to drag and drop a table. And the table is going to essentially iterate through all the records. And for this one, I'm just going to select Location. I'll, I'll add Rating. So like when you do a site inspection, you can put that data in there. And of course, the date. And for this one, I'm going to have Editable Fields. And I click Next and finish that one off. So now we have a design time view of our table. Let me just kind of size it a bit. So as you can see with the AppMaker visual you know, environment, it's quite easy to customize the UI as needed. And I'm going to add another widget. So I just do like a quick search on the palette. And we happen to have a Google Map widget. I'll just drop that onto the page. In this case, I'm just going to kind of resize it a bit so that it will stretch over to the uh, size of the, uh, the two, top two forms. And this is where it gets fun, because I can data bind the widget over here in the property editor, and I pop it open into binding mode, and I just set the location. So now whenever I'm pointing to a record, it will then show that. Now there's another customization that I'm going to do. Right now I just have a text field that got generated for me, but I'm going to spice it up a bit with a star rating widget. 
So I drag and drop the star rating widget, stick it right next to the rating, and I can blow away the rating, and then you can guess what my next step is, right? I need to set the value to a data bound value coming from my backend database. I set it to rating. And so that's basically it for now. I'm gonna go ahead and click preview. So in this sense, what it's doing, it's taking what I've done, what I've designed visually, compiling that into an app script and sent over to the app script runtime. So now we are looking at this data right here where I can you know, click through and maybe sort the data or even directly change some of the data. And of course, if I wanted to add some data here, like maybe our uh, Paris location, whoops, and maybe select a uh, particular date. I love the accessibility features. I can do all that. Uh, very easily. And so now I have a new record, so we have a store in Paris that we can go inspect. All right, so let's go back and add a little bit more functionality to the application. So in this case, I'm going to add a little bit of scripting. And the idea being that whenever I insert a new record, I might want to send an email to the person that's actually you know, inserting or requesting a new store inspection. And so how can I do that? Well, I happen to have a little bit of code here, which if you, I'll, I'll go through it a little bit more closely, but basically, this is a bit of code that's just using app script directly to uh, then send an email to the person who's doing that. So now all I have to do is create a new script. So we have a nice script generation uh, wizard, and it'll even generate some sample code as well. And so this script is going to be running on the server, so it's running app script. So I click create, and there's a little bit of example code that you can learn from. In this case, I just paste that new function that I created. And this one is called, this is a function called notify. And I want this to be called whenever I create a new record in my database. So I can go back to my data model, click on events, and then on the onCreate event, I can just call the function directly. And here I can specify the actual record, of the, which contains the location as well as the inspection date. And those are just eight objects. So that's going to fire off that whenever I create a uh, a new uh, record. So let's go ahead and hit preview again. Also, I should check my email here. So there's no emails in the queue for now. Oops. Don't, don't want to turn off my Wi-Fi. <laughs> All right. So let's create a new inspection. Michael, Geva, any uh, location? We're, we're going to Helsinki. Helsinki. Okay. Yep. Helsinki it is. If I can. I hear it's really nice right now. Helsinki and. What date do we want? Sometime. I'd like to go there in the warm. cold, dark times of winter. So. <laughs> How's June sound? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, there we go. So we're all set. Now let's go check our email and see if we got a message. Oh, surprise, surprise. I have an inspection alert. It says, greetings, your store at the Helsinki location will be inspected, blah, blah, blah. So that's basically it. Hopefully it gives you an idea of how you can work with that maker, starting with a spreadsheet, drag and drop some widgets, put a little bit of coding in there, and we're just literally scratching the surface. So if you have a chance, please come to our demo grounds up on the third floor of Moscone, and we'll show you a whole bunch more stuff as well. So, so I want to take a moment here. Right? That's awesome. Very nice. Just, I mean, I wasn't timing it, I really should. Like, that was five, maybe eight minutes to build an app. Now, that's not an app that, you know, is everything everybody could possibly imagine, but it's an app that can be used right away, and it's, like, literally a personification of Agile, where this is what you asked me for, show me what you need next, show me what you used, right? You can put an analytics into your app, you can start gathering data, you start knowing what your customers need. And the investment time there was trivial, right? And you can easily imagine, that person who knows nothing about product development sitting down next to someone like Chris and saying, I need something to do this. And it starts with a spreadsheet and turns into a usable application where now it's managed, auditable, trackable, everything, and you can start integrating to other workflows. And then all of the things that you want to start having happening are no longer like, oh, God, I'm back in that spreadsheet from hell trying to write a macro. So, um, these are just some of the other customers that we've worked with early on in the stage of, of sort of building out AppMaker. They've been our partners for a long time and helping us flesh out the product, build real life use cases. Um, I just want to call them out in particular, the state of Colorado, San Mina, and the state of Wyoming. Is Flint here? Flint, are you here? Um, I can't see him. It's all, I can't, you're all dark bodies in a gray background right now. But uh, Flint is actually the, was the CIO of the state of Wyoming. They got in and got in really early and did some great things. And he's actually loved it so much he now works at Google. So that worked out really well for us. 
Um, no, it doesn't work out. If you all build app maker applications, I can't hire every single one of you. It's not, I'm not allowed to do that. But, um. So I want to talk a little bit about one of our other customers who have also been a tremendous partner with us. Um, they got involved relatively early as well. Alcado is an online retailer in the UK. They have a lot of employees. They have a lot of, sort of you know, uh, technology investment. There's a big engineering department there. But like I said, those engineers are very focused on their core line of business requirements. As the business is growing, they're solving business problems. But they have a lot of people doing things, including training, conference, going to conferences like this, taking on training activities and so forth. And this was literally just an like, entire mess of emails, manual processes, multiple spreadsheets. I'm sure paper was involved at some point. It was an incredibly taxing process. It was inefficient. Nobody knew what was going on. If you wanted to find out what conferences had been approved to go to or were standard process, there was no way to know. You just had to know the right person. Um, and no management around budget or approvals. It's just like, you know, Fred said it was okay. Uh, I'm going. They felt that AppMaker was a perfect opportunity to kind of automate that process for them. And so they were able to sit down and start building out an application in very little time. And so they actually now have a deployed to production application being used by hundreds of employees to go to conferences, to manage the process, to workflow around it, to set up training. Now, this is where things get really good. So Chris built that application in about five minutes. They built their training management tool and conference attendance management tool in 30 hours. Not 30 calendar hours, 30 engineering hours. It was spread out over a course of about a few weeks. In 30 hours, they built and deployed that application. Now, is that application perfect? I don't know. I've never used it. I'm sure it's amazing. But 30 hours is really amazing how quickly you can get to something being used. And that's a big deal. So you've heard um, about oh, I, I a few forgot customers. to talk. Sorry, I forgot about Paul's quote. Paul is a CTO. I actually got to meet him last night. Is, is Paul here by any chance? Another dark gray cloud of people. Um, they get it, right? Paul understood that they could go and take on problems they could never have taken on before. And I, I want to. I have said this several times. I want to say it again. App Maker is not about building the apps that you're building today where you have a stack, where you have a production environment, where you're focused on line of business operations. It's about taking on all those apps that you desperately want to have in your business, but simply could never bother to take on, right? Because the cost was too high, the viability was not obvious or clear. These are tremendous opportunities for your business, and you have a huge pent-up need that you may not even be talking about. And this is what AppMaker is about. And they got it. They were all over that. Sorry, Keva. You've heard about a few customer stories, seen how to build an app very quickly. I want to tell you where we are today with the other hundreds of customers that we have. So we started uh, rolling this out externally about a year ago, and we had over 30 large customers that we were helping build their first apps and iterating with them and seeing a lot of the problems that our product had and fixed all those before we launched last November to our early adopter program. This program is available to every G Suite business customer with an application, and we now have hundreds of customers that are building hundreds of applications using the product. The general availability launch is planned for later this year, and um, by that time, we'll uh, have passed uh, the audit process that all Google New Products go, so we'll be compliant with international standards, and we're also working on great features to add to the product before we launch it as an automatic uh, service in G Suite, like part of all the other uh, core services that we have in G Suite today. And if you're wondering how you can actually get into the early adopter program, this is very simple. Uh, we have a um, website where you can enter your details, preferably get your admin to do it, because this is the person we are looking to approve this application. So if somebody else in the company does that, we'll get back to you and ask for the admin to do it gsuite.google.com slash appmaker, and uh, that starts the process rolling. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, I think we've sort of told you why we got here, how the customers wanted it, our own internal problems. Chris gave a great demo, he sort of set you up for how you're going to follow up. What I want to do now is a little bit of a dive in terms of like why these things are important, and sort of, a, you know, essentially just a, a first pass at the different features and capabilities that are built into AppMaker and why they're interesting. So as you saw from Chris's demo, it's a visual tool. Right there on the screen, cloud-based, fire up any editor, any browser, anywhere you want, and you're up and running and getting things done. Drag and drop for UI. You know, you, again, 
you know, there are snap tools, there are guide tools, there are various layout things that are built in there. There's a lot of ease to go off and customize the user experience. And again, you want these applications to look nice. They don't necessarily be a user experience nirvana, but you want them to look nice. Material design is built in. If you want to have different themes and looks, you can do that as well. And everything is HTML, JavaScript, CSS, standards-based. It's a very standards-based product. So if you want to go in beyond what we've done, you want to customize the experience, the first level, and just within our editor, all the terms and concepts will be familiar to you. But you can then dive in deeper and start customizing the HTML, the CSS directly, and even writing client-side code in JavaScript to automate and build out a richer front end that goes beyond what we build into our widgets. And that's really powerful. And we've seen some amazing applications. One of the internal applications we have takes advantage of uh, D3, the data visualization tool, and does just amazing things, all data bound to the app maker data behind the scenes. So standards-based sort of runtime and application frameworks. Data modeling, another big thing, right? One of the big challenges for the data is just a general challenge. Standing up data, keeping it available, managing the life cycle of the data, managing the access to the data are all challenges that people have to deal with. We make that very easy. It's all point and click. And you saw how Chris did. He started from a spreadsheet, right? And you know that most of your apps are going to start from that spreadsheet from hell. Boom, the data is there. And then, yeah, you can go off and you can do full relational data modeling. You can have all kinds of events and triggers hanging off the data. And you can build custom data models so you can write JavaScript code to create your own custom data model for an arbitrary data source that you want. And we're going to keep extending that. Gave us a sort of hint of that around connectivity to other data sources because we know right, it's all very well to talk about your data in terms of this application. You want to integrate this across the space to the rest of your application as part of your business. Um, we have a lot of, you know, Chris again shows you the sort of page full of samples. I want to talk about that for a second because it's not just sample code. We actually have a growing library of what I'm calling ready to use applications. So these are applications where we didn't just build something that looks nice or it's a sample that shows you how to use this feature or that feature. This is a turnkey application. You get it as source code, you deploy, you know, provision it and deploy it using AppMaker and use it as is. And the application itself has an admin model where you can go on and then the admin can set it up and customize the experience of the application to put your, you know, your business name and your icons and whatever sort of logos you'd like and customize various preferences for that application. It's a SaaS product that you run and operate on top of our infrastructure. And we have a growing number of those applications available today, and we're going to keep adding to them. So one of them today we have is essentially a clone of our own internal people directory. It keys off of the uh, directory services features of, of G Suite and provides a nice directory service view into the thing. And then we have other apps as well, workflow and so forth. And this is a key part of our business strategy. We're going to keep building out these apps. Um, I feel like I'm at the Academy Awards now where I'm getting the music telling me to go to the next slide and the timing <laughs> like that. Um, so. <laughs> you just totally throw me off. It's perfect. There you go. So it's not just about uh, you know, building an app that lives in its own silo. It is about integration to other services. It's about connecting to your various parts of your business. So first of all, uh, you know, within AppScript, everybody who's used AppScript knows you have great access to G Suite APIs, but you also have great access to other Google Cloud Platform APIs. And that list will just keep getting longer and longer and longer as we build those integrations in. We're also building in features in the future towards other services to make it easy to take the same sort of auth magic. Anybody here ever had to write OAuth code on purpose? All right. Anybody want to do it again? Right. right. So we've built the OAuth code into you. We do the OAuth management for you for all the Google services and G Suite services. What we're going to do is we're going to go past that and start working at third party services as well to get you having that ease of use to talk to authenticated services. It's a big deal. Uh, this is just the icon soup page or the NASCAR page, if you will, of various sort of services that like that. Does anybody know what the one in the middle is? It must be an ads or something like that. Is it? Does anybody know? Is it an ads thing? AdSense. That, I knew it was something really vital and important to our business. Uh, <laughs> all right, we'll keep going here. So. Um, just a quick overview here of the overall architecture of how things are put together. This is obviously a, a beautifully abstract architecture that bears no resemblance to how things are built and how the sausage is made. Um, but it's actually important to understand how we think about the problem and how deployments come together. So at the top of this, of course, is the app maker editor. That's the, the experience that you saw Chris demoing. It is the IDE. You can edit source code. You can build out. Um, you guys are going to get these slides and the video, so you get better visuals of these than your pictures, I'm guessing. But you know, feel free. Um, and that application maintains and manages the source code of the application, manages revisions of the application, manages access and collaboration. It's fully collaborative, real-time collaborative, so you can have multiple people work in that editor environment. That application, then, when Chris hits preview or publish to go off and deploy the application, is generating an app script project. 
and that AppScript project is pushed onto the AppScript execution environment and now runs using AppScript. Now, this is not the same AppScript that you have, might have become familiar with. It is a massively enhanced version of AppScript, and that's now available to all G Suite for Business customers with increased capacity, better performance, increased connectivity to various services, more API quota and throughput. So we're really beefing up the runtime to make AppMaker fly. As I've mentioned before, we've also extended what we're doing within AppScript to make various things possible. So obviously, all the Google services, those are familiar, like that. Drive tables is the built-in storage model uh, module for AppMaker. It stores data in its own private data store. It's highly performant. It's not meant to scale to giant data sets, so please don't think this is a cheap way to get BigQuery going in your little world. Um, and we'll talk about BigQuery in a second. But it is exactly what you need for 90% of your applications. And when you feel like your needs have changed or you want to interop with other systems data as well, right, you can switch to using Cloud SQL. And then you'll also be able to switch to Postgres or MySQL and then other data sources as well. So that's a list of expanding data connectors that we're going to build out. And then those same data connector things will also work to talking to SaaS services that are not, strictly speaking, a database, but maybe like Salesforce or something like that, where you want to get to enterprise data and build a data bind into your application. Um, before you, no, I was going to do something else. And I've, I've already forgot what I was going to do. Um, so another brief call out to the state of Wyoming, because it really illustrates how things came together. So the state of Wyoming. Um, has a great IT department. They've been building out things on G Suite for a while. They've done App Script and various things. They have a team that is responsible for uh, essentially security of their environment, uh, the software environment. And they have a set of tools that they use to, to track and detect you know, phishing attacks and various things. They leverage G Suite's built-in services, but they have a bunch of other products as well. And they wanted to kind of pull together a 360 dashboard of all the things that could happen. This has been a long-standing wish of theirs, but they could never really pull it together. Again, with AppMaker, they sat down and said, we can do this. And I, I want to talk about this picture here, because this is quite literally the guy with the hat. He's the engineer. right? And the other people there are the people who are sitting there thinking about the business problem. They are the stakeholders here. They are not engineers. They're not software developers. And this picture is obviously a little bit staged, but it is actually how things happened. They sat down and said, what we want is this information here. We want to track these things here. We're going to pull these things together there. And the engineer was able to do this on the fly. And in a matter of days, they had something working. In a matter of weeks, they had something deployed. And they are now actively tracking and building out this application as a way to track their security events across the organization, how to respond, how to have a workflow around them. So when something happens, it's not just, hey, something seems bad. There's a whole process that kicks off around that. So a really great story for how you can build out applications and compress that cycle, where the stakeholders, the engineering, get to market, get to usage, happens much faster. So you learn what you need to know faster, and you spend less risk, less time, and less effort to get in there. We want all of you to be able to focus on your business needs and be able to spec what kind of problems you need to solve. And we want to help you identify what are the best candidates in your companies to actually build AppMaker apps around. So we want to share some of the areas where we've seen a lot of um, hairiness and uh, business uh, workflows that require easy, uh, you know, better use and um, more productive uh, workflows. So the first one, which we've already mentioned here several times, is Sheets. Sheets, uh, especially very large ones, especially the ones that have more than a handful of people updating them on a regular basis, usually hide some kind of process that's being done internally and hasn't been fleshed out um, uh, you know, to the extreme. And so uh, a lot of times there are errors happening. Several times, people are updating the wrong cells. They're extracting, you know, taking decisions based on information that's maybe not accurate. And in general, there is, you know, it's not a very good experience to start diving into a sheet and look for the information that's especially critical to you. So this is an area where taking AppMaker, specking your UI, binding it to this data source, to the sheet, and building the process in this UI could really change things for the better. Another area that we've seen is uh, around administrative tasks, and that relates to bulk and recurring operations with other G Suite core services, especially Calendar and Gmail. Uh, if we look, for example, at the store inspection uh, application that we saw, this is something that without the application requires scheduling tens of events across the year, attaching documents to those calendar invites. Um, there must be errors if you want to update those 
you again have to find the right calendar entry and update that one. Same way if you're sending updates or reports or if you're requesting information from customers, vendors, partners, you're generating the same kind of Gmail uh, blasts uh, every week or 10 days or month. And this is another area where you could automate and have a much more uh, fluid experience with AppMaker. The third area that we have seen where people could benefit from building an app is uh, where you use BigQuery a lot, where you're calling APIs. You're already using scripting in extensive ways. So that means that you've probably already tackled uh, some complex workflows. But uh, in order to maintain those workflows, change them, make the UI nicer, it would be much better to use AppMaker to tackle those. And I want to talk a little bit about BigQuery for a second, because that was the thing I forgot to talk about. We've actually seen an increasingly common pattern. You know, BigQuery is not free. And people want to have various UIs into the BigQuery data. And what people are starting to build is AppMaker applications that are essentially this front end to your BigQuery experience, where it helps the user construct the query, figure out what they're trying to do, connect the various pieces they want runs the BigQuery, and then caches the results in a local data store, which then can be used for multiple traversals and sort of exploring and exports and whatever. So you essentially use it as a cache for the output of a BigQuery response. You might choose not to rerun the, the query over and over again because the user is just sitting there poking around at the data. It's been tremendously effective. It's a great pattern to build on, and we're going to start building out samples in the same way. Thanks. So this is a great point in time to hear from two people that we have in the audience with us today about their experience and how they tackle problems that they face their companies. First, I'd like to call up uh, Mario Zuniga from Sanmina. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? OK. So I've been in Sanmina for 10 years, uh, leading enterprise applications development teams. And lately, in the last three years, I'm responsible for the digital workplace team that, uh, that is responsible for all the collaboration platforms. And Google is uh, one of our main uh, pieces in our portfolio. Um, so when we heard about AppMaker uh, early last year, uh, we, we got very interested because it fits very well our cloud-centric uh, strategy. Uh, we want to do all cloud, uh, cloud first whenever we are looking for applications. And the fact that the application is in the cloud and is following the same kind of structure and using a, a single technology, uh, it's a great thing for us. So uh, as these guys mentioned, there's there are always the need for local applications for specific use cases. Um, we, as an enterprise team, cannot resolve all the business problems uh, because we have too much. Uh, and uh, the big thing is, is timing. So uh, instead of weeks, we can develop um, uh, our applications in, in, in hours. Um, also, the fact uh, that we have all the applications in a central place, we also reduce the rework. So if the plant in Brazil has developed the application to resolve the business problem A, and there is a plant in Australia that is looking for the same kind of problem resolution, they can reuse that same application and, uh, and avoid rework. Um, so for us going forward, uh, we want to invest much more in, uh, in, uh, in a maker development. Uh, the use cases that we see today are basically for simple workflows and, uh, and paper reduction. As a manufacturing company, we have lots of inspections and uh, checklists and many things that uh, AppMaker is just a, a, a great fit. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next is James Ferreira from Ignite Synergy. Hey, everyone. So uh, Ignite Synergy is uh, a business that we were a software development company on AppScript. Uh, I've written two O'Reilly books on AppScript. So when we heard about AppMaker, we were super excited that it was a new platform built on top of AppScript. Uh, and so we've provided a product that I want to announce today that's called AppMaker University. And uh, what we're doing is providing training for AppMaker and uh, online training on uh, online videos and also in person and boot camps and things like that. And I wanted to mention a couple of the clients that we're working with that we're helping train them. Uh, some of you are here in the audience, so just scream out. Yeah. There we go. There we go. All right, there. Awesome. 
Uh, so one of the companies we're working with is Quora, and uh, they had, of course, a spreadsheet-based application that was doing uh, scheduling and things like that. Uh, and it just isn't scalable. It's really hard to manage. They're all constantly duplicating it and uh, having to rebuild it. And so uh, we suggested, well, why don't we try AppMaker? So we're moving that project over to AppMaker. Uh, we're also working with a company called uh, MSA. They're a large construction company. And uh, they have built their entire business process in spreadsheets. And I actually helped them do some of that by writing app scripts to make those spreadsheets connect to things and services and work well. And when we saw AppMaker, we're like, wow, you could rebuild your whole entire business process in AppMaker. And so that's exactly what they're doing. And they're really uh, excited to be doing that. So. Uh, lots of great stuff going on. So, James, Thank tell you. us a little bit about AppMaker University in terms of what the goal is here. Yeah, so the goal of AppMaker University is, you know, we realized that, you know, the, it's a brand new product. There's really no books written on it or anything else like that. There's not a lot of areas to find out how you can start get started. So we've got a lot of getting started videos, a lot of explanations about how you use the different widgets, how, what they actually do, how you set them up, how you go about creating apps. And uh, we're providing a boot camp as well so that you can go from no knowledge at all to completed applications and have a really high level uh, ability to be able to create those for your businesses. So we found during our sort of trusted tester program that we had people come in and do boot camps with us. And I think James basically took all our ideas and stole them and turned them into a product. And I, I applaud you for it, sir. It's Something great. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. no, it's exactly, <laughs> if, frankly, it's exactly what we want is, you know, it, it, there's only so many of us who can talk to so many of you. Extending the reach is really critical. I think that if your company is in, starting to engage and thinking about building an app maker, dive in by all means, but accelerate the process by bringing in people who've been doing this for a while, they know the pitfalls, they know the ways to go do it, best practices. It's a great story. So I, I'm, I'm actually really glad you're starting. It was a key part of our long-term strategy. So great. Well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. As we head towards the end of our talk, we want to mention what's next for the product and what's next for you in the audience and your companies. So you've seen a lot of um, functionality that we've presented here today. And we want to tell you what are the three main themes that we are focusing on before general availability later this year. One area where we see a lot of um, demand is to connect AppMaker, the platform, to a lot of data sources that you already have in your companies and you would benefit from building business apps around those. So uh, we'll look into, I mean, we're actually already developing some uh, ways to connect these external third-party data sources to our platform. And we believe that this would really ease the migration of many non-G Suite environments to G Suite. The second theme uh, space that we are uh, working on is to make the product even faster and easier. So we are going to provide more templates and ready-to-use apps. We are also looking to have modules that are part of apps that you could use and actually build your own apps in a faster and easier way so you can mix and match functionalities that are common to several apps. And that would make everything even easier, more useful, and faster. Third theme is to create an ecosystem. So we've heard from Mario, for example, that in large companies, different departments, different plants, tend to have similar needs, and they may, you know, grassroots develop the same kind of apps uh, multiple times. So if we have a good way to engage, like, a broad audience inside the company with what's being developed by other people, that could be very useful. And we are looking uh, at the best way to let you share your applications with others inside the company. And also with the broader AppMaker community. So any company that is using AppMaker could benefit from an app that was built by another company. So if you're willing to share your code and help others, that will be great. We've seen a lot of interest in, in like not the actual app itself, but various components and pieces. So the packaging solutions that will make up AppMaker are going to be part of that story. We're really interested in moving that direction. And what's next for all of you like as you head out of this room in a few minutes? So you can learn more about the product by looking at our tutorials on the Google Developer site. If you're already in our early adopter program or you would like to see some of the questions and issues that our users are already bringing, you can join the AppMaker users group and see what's being posted and discussed over there. There are also code labs uh, that you can access through the group and actually you know, take some um, 
learning exercises for yourself and see how that goes. And very relevant, we have a showcase at Moscone West on level three. So we would really like to see all of you and let you try hands on, you know, playing with the product yourself right now. And also meeting a lot of our engineering team that's on site and can, you know, get into much deeper details with any one of you. So we'll be there until the end of the conference on Friday afternoon. And remember, anyone who wants to apply and register and be part of our early adopter program, it's very easy. You either you know, need to be a, I mean, you're either a G Suite business customer already, or if you're considering to, that's a good um, decision to make. And then you can apply and get into the program. Michael. All right. So we've covered a lot of material. We're going to bring it together. We really hope you've enjoyed this talk. Uh, simple call to action. Go to the showcase today, try AppMaker, join the EAP, start building great business apps. Low code, faster development cycles, internal applications, scale with the size of your organization. I want to thank, in particular, the AppMaker engineering team. They have been working on this literally for years. This has been a tremendous project, and we're really excited to bring this to market. I want to thank our partners as well, both those who've, those who've been up here today, but also people who've been with us for a long time in the Trusted Tester. To Gava and Chris for doing a great presentation. And thank you to you for coming today. We've really enjoyed this talk. Hope you did as well. Thank you.